All right, P powering through the afternoon. We uh, next have Nelson Wang. Nelson is from, uh, could you help me? Is it ASUS or ASUS? ASUS. ASUS, yes. okay, thank you, appreciate that. Yeah. And he's gonna talk about uh, <coughs> their plans for Open Edge and uh, how they're gonna participate with uh, chassis, sleds, and we'll Absolutely. find out what else. Absolutely, thank, thank you so you. much, Mike. Good afternoon, um, lady and gentlemen. Um, so um, it's a great honor for us to be here. To be here. And then uh, we, um, we uh, joined uh, uh, very happily as platinum member to the OCP community. And then uh, the focal point of uh, this session will be um, our very first contribution to the OCP community, which is the Open Edge. My name is Nelson Wen. I'm the uh, general manager of enterprise solutions at uh, ASUS. So I was hired uh, by the company end of last year, right after uh, Thanksgiving. And then, uh, and then I was hired to establish and lead a team of uh, ESB enterprise solution business. And then ESB team started uh, operating as of uh, January of this year. So why do we want to create a new uh, team? So ASUS um, is a 30-year-old company. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, the company was established in 1989. Uh, about 17,000 employees, um, you know, work very happily at the company, day in, day out, almost 24 hours a day, bring $15 billion of revenue. Um, most of you know about ASUS as a, as a, as a motherboard company, as a laptop company. Uh, you know, I, I bump into my customers when passing through the security check at the airports, because everybody needs to bring their laptop out. And then, uh, yeah, quite a few people use our Wi-Fi routers. Uh, they, they, they do not get uh, hacked as easily, so that's uh, happy news. Uh, we do monitors as well. Um, and then so um, uh, our uh, bread and butter core business is still motherboards. We ship about 25 million motherboards. So in the last five minutes I, I was sharing all this with you, we just sold another 2,000 uh, motherboards in the last five minutes. And then so, um, so you know about ASUS uh, very strongly focused uh, in consumer electronics. However, um, our server business unit was established in 1995. So uh, this is something that is not very well uh, publicized or uh, very well known. And then so um, initially we were doing um, server developments for ODMs. You know, we had uh, some of the uh, hyperscale customers uh, were, were companies that were our customers. And then in the year 2008, uh, we split it. Uh, the ODM portion became Pegatron, and then ASUS remained as a o branding OEM companies. And then from there, the uh, server biz, uh, business unit, uh, business model has changed a little bit. So uh, before the ESB team was established, server BU was uh, designing, manufacturing, and selling primarily server, server level components, right? Like motherboards, cards, and bare bones. And then so the ESB team was, was called in and, and established and formed particularly to um, consolidate all those uh, hardware innovation resources together, and then uh, adding um, some, some other values, and then aiming at uh, selling and promoting um, these solutions to enterprise companies. That's why the name is. So um, our um, primary um, strength that we want to build up with the new ESB team is uh, offering global services, professional services, including on-site services, you know, installation, and then all this. And then we also want to uh, deliver application-oriented um, end-to-end solutions. And we have that um, uh, aimed for um, OpenH as well. And then obviously we want to uh, bring continuously our innovation in hardware design and, and manufacturing. And then so um, with, uh, with this intention in mind, uh, we need a platform and vehicle, right? And then so we believe um, OCP is the perfect vehicle and platform for us. And then so we, uh, we aggressively and we, uh, we very happily and I'm very honored to uh, be able to embrace this great platform, this uh, great community, which is OCP. And then so we um, joining OCP, we're, we're, we're a very new member. Um, and then so by joining OCP, we want to listen, we want to learn, and after that we want to be able to contribute. And then also, uh, we want to join OCP with a little, little a, a slightly different flavor, right? So we want to focus on edge, and then um, we want to also facilitate um, channel partners in terms of adopting, you know, OCP-oriented uh, solutions. And then we also want to enable enterprise for adopting these solutions as well, and because that's what we have been doing for many years. 
And then besides um, OCP, we're also embracing other open source communities, especially uh, like Linux Foundation, as well as um, a Crane, which is part of uh, LF as well. All right, so um, this, is what we're, this is what we're doing. So we're, we're doing a, um, a compute sled, and that is uh, based on a Xeon D processor. Um, so next slide, we'll talk about you know, um, why we're choosing Xeon D. I mean, uh, ARM is, is, is perfect. Perhaps uh, that's, that will be our next, uh, next product. And then I'll, I'll be calling you Shannon. Uh, so this is, uh, this, uh, this is what uh, the uh, ASUS first solution will deliver. Um, 90 times cores, you know, um, 2.5 terabyte of uh, RAM, uh, five uh, slim uh, GPUs, 10 MEMEs, and OCP 3.0. This, uh, this is what you get with, uh, with a single chassis. So uh, why are we cho choosing uh, Xeon D? So we believe that Xeon D brings uh, several uh, advantages, uh, advantages uh, which are uh, uh, top priority for some of the uh, telco customers. I'm not saying for all the telco customers, but then for several telco customers, these are like priority advantages. So first of all, um, Xeon D offers wider operating temperature compared to a regular Xeon SPs. Also, Xeon D offers longer life cycle. So Xeon D is always on the Intel embedded roadmap. So that, that means automatically it's, uh, it's, it offers seven years of uh, lifespan. Um, and then also Xeon D is uh, supposedly to be more power efficient. So from here you, uh, on the chart you see that if we're taking the same core count of CPU, um, Xeon D versus a, a Skylake, uh, the CPU itself is, uh, is, is, uh, is at a lower TDP. Xeon D itself is an SOC. So it doesn't, it doesn't need another PCH, right? So I think the PCH is uh, consuming another 20 watt. Um, the Xeon D uh, brings uh, embedded four 10 gig NICs. So we're designing pulling two of the 10 uh, embedded two uh, uh, 10 gig out. So if two 10 gigs um, is enough for you, then you don't have to use another NIC, right? So that, that's another saving of 25 uh, watts. So altogether, we're estimating uh, with Xeon D, we're able to save as much as 50 watts per, per node. So that's 250 watts per chassis. Um, right, and then uh, in certain cases, uh, the Xeon D offers uh, you know, uh, some uh, uh, price uh, advantage as well. Okay. So this, uh, this is our spec. Thanks, uh, uh, Mike, for um, having introduced this uh, earlier. Uh, it it perfectly, uh, perfectly aligns with the uh, open chassis. We, 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 we did um, the, uh, the fitting, so mechanically uh, it fits pretty well in our first uh, spin, so we're, we're, we're very happy about it. So again, um, the idea uh, is that we, um, uh, we support um, the, the concept of full interoperability and then also um, interfunctionality, right? So um, uh, the RMC, the compute sleds, um, and then so we're adopting Nokia's contribution of the chassis, we're gonna, we're gonna make the chassis, and then so supposedly, eventually, we envision a world that um, customers can buy whoever's chassis and can buy whoever's power supplies or, or BBUs or compute sleds, and then they can mix match. So this is uh, the design of our compute sled. This is uh, how you see it. And then um, we are um, scheduling to have a uh, commercially available functioning unit of this in December. But then currently we have a couple of uh, now working dummy uh, sleds uh, for mechanical fitting purposes at the experience lab. Um, so we have done um, uh, some last minute changes uh, in terms of spec. So, uh, the changes were, uh, were including, um, so we replaced the OCP 2.0 uh, with 3.0. So this changes happened like two weeks ago. Um, and then because of that, um, so our intention is to have a, a, a large form factor of uh, OCP 3.0, which uh, you're able to, uh, to uh, put in a uh, OCP 3.0 card that gives you as many as four 25 gig. And then because of that, then it takes up my space. So I, I'm only left with two embedded 10 gig from the Xeon DL. And then, uh, and then also, um, let me see if this works. And then also, so another, another thing that is worth mentioning is that uh, uh, this slot here um, uh, is designed to support a uh, T4 uh, GPU by NVIDIA. And uh, we believe that uh, when 5G comes, <laughs> there will be um, instances or scenarios 
that uh, customers will have to uh, employ certain kind of inferencing on the edge. And then we believe, uh, as of today, T4 offers a very good inference uh, uh, you know, capability. Uh, this I think here is uh, is 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 very unique. It's a it's a it's a patent uh, technology from ASUS, and we actually borrowed this technology from our gaming product. So we're leveraging a dim slot, but then we're plugging a, a riser that has uh, that supports two M.2s, each one on one end. So because this, then uh, in a very uh, little tiny compact space, I'm able to have a two M.2s as well. So you are able to do uh, RAID one software RAID one. Uh, with M.2 for your OS. Are those uh, in 2.1.10? Uh, yeah, it, uh, I, I don't remember the uh, thing, but then um, it, it, it supports the longest, uh, the M.2s, right. All right, so another thing is that uh, um, we, um, uh, we, we originally, in our um, previous design, we had some I.O. porch underneath the MEMEs, but then we have a study and then we communicate with uh, flash vendors, and it seems that uh, the roadmap from flash vendors on MEMEs are awful high, 15 millimeters. So we have to uh, we had to uh, move the, some of the IO ports over this side, so we're able to support 15 millimeter high uh, M.2 uh, U.2 MEMEs. So those are the uh, some of the uh, last minute design changes. So why did you took uh, 7 millimeter? Oh yeah, so because um, uh, on. Uh, from our communication and research with uh, flash vendors, their roadmap with MVMEs are awful height. Uh, you, you can get seven millimeter, but then uh, with SATA uh, SSDs, but then for with MVMEs, I, I think they're growing in capacity and stuff like that. And then also with that, then uh, we uh, were able to uh, uh, introduce computational storage application. That I, I'll have a slide to talk about that. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Thank you. So this is an explode diagram, and then um, uh, we, we want to appreciate uh, Nokia and then thank Nokia for their, their hard work um, and then their good intentions contributing all these design to the community. This, uh, this uh, chassis was very well designed, and it's, it's, uh, it's completely uh, cable free. So I think um, we think that this is a very good um, what's called um, design for telco companies where serviceability in remote areas are, are crucially important. Alright, so um, this is also another thing that we're introducing in our design which we call um, Thermal Radar 2.0 and this is the ASUS technology that is common in, all, in uh, almost every uh, rack mount, standard rack mount service of ours. And then what uh, Thermal Radar 2.0 is, so um, there's a lot of uh, third party uh, devices and components in this thing. Um, the DRAMs, the processors, the MEMEs, the GPU cards, and then most of these uh, third party devices come with their own thermal sensor as well, right? And then so we want to be able to, uh, to, uh, to uh, what's called, to, uh, to take these uh, thermal uh, readings and then incorporate these thermal readings in, into our thermal management. So as uh, Mike mentioned uh, in the morning, uh, the thermal uh, is primarily uh, supported by the, uh, by the fans that are that go into the sled themselves. So uh, we're using four uh, counter-rotating fans, and then these are M plus one uh, redundant fans. And then by um, doing this, we avoid the uh, scenario where uh, there's, a, there's a, let's say we have a GPU here, and then GPU is being stressed, but then there's minimum uh, what's called a power utilization on the CPU, and then conventionally, then the the node doesn't know, right? Because the node usually takes the reading from CPU, and then you get the, your GPU overheated, and then so you'll get throttle on the GPU. So with this, we we try to avoid that scenario. And then also, um, so um, besides the hardware itself, um, and then so. Uh, we, we uh, ASUS is a big company, and we also envision, in terms of the entire computing uh, spectrum, uh, you know, uh, there there will be a data, a, a huge amount of data generated from client, you know, cell phones and this and that. We do cell phones, and then we have a new division that is doing IOTs, and like the in, in industrial side, and then we have a, a vast uh, offering of uh, standard rack mount servers that go into the uh, the uh, backhaul. Um, data centers, there's a big gap in between, which is the edge, right? And so that's why 
we are very, um, very animated in participating in this. And then uh, ASUS has a very beefy software team. And then we have been able to, um, to port a kernel onto our standard Rackmount servers. And that we are 100% uh, confident that when, uh, by December, when we, our uh, open edge is uh, commercially available, we're able to offer to our customers a pre-integrated Akrano, ready to go kind of uh, open edge nodes. We also believe that uh, um, the, uh, uh, obviously the uh, telco customers or the, the, the telco vertical is the, the first visible, uh, uh, what's called usage case for these products. But then we believe that as the uh, 5G comes and then gets more enabled, there will be different uh, verticals that will potentially have usage models for this kind of product. And then uh, that these verticals may not necessarily be telcos, right? So then we, we want to also offer a, a different type of uh, container management and then uh, different type of VMs uh, capabilities onto this. And then, and then so when customers are asking about software integrations and certifications, uh, all these are included in our, in our roadmap plans. All right, so in terms of uh, delivery models, uh, I was saying that uh, we will be making a chassis, so we're able to sell the chassis alone. And then we're able to sell the compute slot alone. And so you can, you can buy you know, other people's chassis and then just, just get our compute slot. We can do the uh, slot um, with, uh, with you know, pre-integrated in the chassis. And then, um, so our slot is based on Z on D. So one of the things with Z on D is that you have to specify which Xeon D processor, because uh, that's, uh, that's factory uh, install. Um, and then also, based on this, we're able to, uh, to, uh, to uh, cooperate with the customer, have a certain software stack preloaded pre installed. All right. So some of the uh, potential configurations and, and usage cases. So um, as, as, as we have presented in, in previous slide, we have pre-chosen three different uh, Xeon D options. So there's a four core, there's an eight core, and a 16 cores. And then according to each different uh, Xeon Ds, we envision different uh, usage cases and, and workload scenarios. So uh, we're, we're proposing or suggesting this kind of uh, RAM and then storage and then different networking options. Okay. And then so um, we're talking about um, uh, inference AI on the edge, right? And then so uh, we are chose, we're choosing T4 and one. I mean, so we uh, this, uh, our sled provides a uh, high height, um, uh, low profile, half length uh, by 16 slot. So not necessarily that you know it can only work with the T4, but then we believe T4 offers a very compelling inferencing uh, inferencing uh, capability, and then that's uh, and that's uh, that's that's something that is supporting in our sled. So this is the uh, computational storage that I was talk talking about, and then so this thing, this device, able to uh, to be to able to to be able to go into our sled, and then so what is computational storage? So uh, this particular example is uh, from a, a third-party company, a partner with uh, uh, with us called NGD Systems. So what they're doing is that they are integrating an ARM processor into the uh, uh, the, the NAND devices, right? So. What, what happens is that if there comes a scenario that you, you, you want to do something uh, directly with uh, ingress, um, what's called uh, data, and then so if that's something that is not very CPU intensive, and then you can, you can automatically put your software stack on the uh, embedded ARM, and then so it gets uh, com uh, computed in the MEME itself without going through the uh, CPU and then the, the, the whole thing. So that greatly, uh, greatly reduces your, your latency. Uh, one um, case that um, there's also another, so uh, there's also another case that NGD is, uh, is doing, and then this uh, off the show product. So they're doing, they're using the ARM process to uh, compress and decompress the data, right? So uh, as this is what you see, uh, today they're with one single MME, we're able to get as big as 32 terabyte of, of capacity. That's that's amazing. All right, so um, we're saying that um, uh, obviously the the immediate visible direct uh, vertical or industry uh, for adoption of this kind of product is telco, but then we envision that there will be different verticals. So we we envision that. Uh, uh, industrial factories will have some kind of uh, will, will need to adopt some kind of edge 
uh, capability for uh, factory automation. And for example, like autonomous driving, the car manufacturers will will eventually adopt some, some sort of uh, edge capabilities for autonomous driving. So when we're talking to uh, these potential customers, then they come and ask us, how do we deploy right, edge, uh, you know, like infrastructure? How do we deploy this infrastructure on the edge, right? So we know that you know, on the cloud, you know, people go to AWS or Google and stuff like that. But then for edge, who is able to do that? So um, these are the uh, partners that, um, this is one particular partner that we're working with. Uh, it's called Vapor.io. And then so um, they can do a full container with uh, you know, a bunch, you know, a couple of racks uh, you know, filled with uh, open edge systems or standard rack mount servers. And then these containers preloaded can be uh, directly uh, installed underneath the uh, cell tower. And then so Vapor.io is, uh, is uh, the, the, what's called the, uh, the background investor of Vapor.io is Crown Castle, and Crown Castle is the, one of the biggest cell tower operators in the US. So if uh, you know, there comes a, a question that you know, certain customer needs uh, support with uh, edge deployment, then uh, we, uh, we have this partner that may be able to offer that solution. So call to action, so we want to be, be humble, right? So uh, our call to action is more of a call to action for ourselves. So uh, we want to get this done uh, as soon as possible. And then so the, um, we want to uh, work very closely with the, with the foundation and then, and, and then define our, because I mean, we're, we're new to the foundation, so we need to learn and then define the process for our contribution. Um, and then later on, we'll, uh, when this becomes available and then we'll, we'll announce to, uh, to you uh, for its availability on the on the marketplace. Okay, so that con concludes my uh, presentation. Is there any any question? Any questions? All right, cool. Thank you so much.